My granddad bought the southern part of this ranch in 1941. Back in the 50s and 60s, uh, you could ride a horse about anywhere you wanted to on the ranch, and you'd see a lot of prairie chickens out here. It's a real common thing. But now that some of that mesquite has gotten so thick and so big that it's just nearly impossible to ride a horse through it. The native prairie that, that used to exist disappeared because of fire suppression and more uniform and heavier grazing. Uh, we began to see more of a monoculture of vegetation. We also started to see encroachment of some of those uh, fire intolerant species like mesquite. Prairie chickens show an aversion to any type of vertical structure like that on the landscape. And so those native rangelands that used to provide prime habitat for the species have become unusable over time. The Western Association of Fish and Wildlife Agencies began developing a collaborative conservation plan to try and stave off the federal listing of the lesser prairie chicken uh, by establishing and growing populations. The Lesser Prairie Chicken Range Ride Plan is a collaborative effort with many different government and private conservation agencies and organizations and through agreements with private landowners. We implement prescribed grazing as the core conservation practice. Uh, landowners also receive an annual payment for implementing that prescribed grazing plan for the term of their agreement. And we also address all the other threats to the species that occur on each of those properties. We deliver restoration practices such as grubbing of mesquite, uh, chemical suppression of shinnery oak, and then we deliver a payment to the landowner equivalent to the actual cost to implement those practices. The development in the region, oil and gas, wind, solar, electric transmission and distribution, and telecommunications. All of those also have effects on prairie chickens by adding vertical structure, adding noise, adding traffic. What the range-wide plan really does is try to focus that development in places that reduce the impact to prairie chickens. One of the reasons that it was a good idea for us to join into this WAFWA effort was uh, because they help us uh, select places that are less impactful to the chicken first, but it, on places that we just can't avoid them, they also help us with the design and, and offsets so that if we impact the chicken in this place, they get double the habitat elsewhere. The farmers and ranchers are an important component of this because 96% of prairie chicken habitat across the range is private land. The industry money pays those landowners to make improvements on their property that not only improve prairie chicken habitat, but also farming and ranching. We decided this would be a good program for this ranch and we've had, you know, the shinery was just a, nearly a 100% canopy out here and the grass was uh, pretty limited. And by when we went in there and sprayed this shimmery, well, we just turned it to a tall grass prairie, like it's similar to what it should have been historically. We've uh, sprayed about uh, 8,000 acres of shinnery, and we're in the process of grubbing around 8,000 acres of uh, mesquite land. And uh, we converted our uh, grass uh, production from about 400 pounds of grass per acre to 12 to 1,600 pounds of grass per acre. The ultimate goal of the range-wide plan is to manage for sustainable populations of lesser prairie chickens and to maintain the industry and economy throughout the region. You know, Pioneer jumped into this program with about 170 other companies um, because it was the ability to control our own, own fate. Voluntarily, we were able to jump in and do some things that would allow us to have some predictability with our future. And since we've started this wildlife program, it allowed more grass to grow, and we're starting to see chickens. It's one of those things that's been good for us financially. It's been good for the, for the land and for the cattle, and well, this is a, kind of a dream come true.